Welcome, everybody. This is the Life Enthusiast Online Radio and TV Network, restoring vitality to you and the planet. I'm your co-host, Scott Patton, and joining me, as usual, is the Life Enthusiast Health Coach, Martin Patella. Hey, Martin, how are you doing today? It's a lovely day, and I am alive and well. Excellent. I to say, you know, once we hit into the 60s, I'm starting to appreciate with, with, with gratitude the fact that I'm still on the correct side of the green. <laughs> yes. And today we're going to be talking about an amazing new product that we've just received in our warehouse. If you want to increase your energy levels without artificial stimulation, if you want to increase your brain function and alertness and concentration, and I really want to do that because I'm noticing my brain isn't acting the same way it did 40 years ago. If you want to have uh, ox cell oxygenation, which means getting the nutrients into your cells that you want, if you want to support your immune system and a whole bunch of other things, then this is the, the show for you to watch. So Martin, what is this amazing new product that we've got and what makes it so different? Indeed, it's very much unlike other things. This is based on an invention by Everett Story, who uh, did, invented this somewhere back in the 1960s. And uh, it's based on a discovery that deuterium sulfate, which is slightly different than hydrogen sulfate, behaves very differently when it comes to taking apart living substances. Essentially, the, the sulfur in this substance is way more active than you would otherwise expect. And sulfur is involved in transport of oxygen into the cells and transport of toxins out of the cells. So to put it plainly, unlike other things, it will detoxify and oxygenate at the same time. Hence, the points that you just made. Clearer thinking, more energy, uh, less fatigue, all those things, they all happen because of less toxin and more oxygen. And those of us that are finding going up a flight of stairs is a little harder than it used to be, or those of us that want to get more out of the workouts that they do, whether it's at the gym, running, or whatever else they may be doing, does this help with endurance and stamina? Absolutely. Again, stamina and endurance is all about utilization of oxygen. The thing that makes you not be able to work long and hard or run long distances is the lactic acid accumulation in your muscles as you're burning uh, you're burning mm, glucose you're converting starch into energy in presence of oxygen and when there's not enough oxygen you switch from this in presence of oxygen burning into the in absence of oxygen burning which it's not good. Switch. Well, we talk about it in our other lectures. It's 17 times less efficient. Instead of 34 units of ATP, you create only two units of ATP when there's no oxygen present for this reaction. So when we force more oxygen into the cell in the presence of this detoxicile, that's the advantage that we get. So it sounds to me that this probably would also be helpful for people that have problems with their digestion. And, it, and also, as we grow older, our metabolism tends to slow down. So does it impact in those areas? Absolutely. The same physiology that's involved at peak performance is also involved in regular performance. And of course, when you underperform, adding this into the mix will bring you to at least as good as you remember yourself in your earlier years. So Martin, uh, we, we know that it's really important that we get oxygen into the cells and everything else, but when it comes to this uh, term that everybody is uh, you know, terrified of, free radicals, that, those are extra oxygen molecules that are running around damaging things. So is this going to increase that or is it going to you know, make it less or does it have an impact on, on free radicals? Um, it's a correct fear and uh, this will actually create free radicals through the oxygenation. If you could visualize it, imagine that you have lit up a hibachi, a charcoal burning barbecue. 
all of a sudden you have these little lumps of coal and they're hot. And if you want to pick one up, you can hold it for only a very short amount of time and you have to toss it from one hand to the other, otherwise you burn your skin. And <laughs> that's what's going on inside of your cell. You're actually burning a car carbohydrate, in this case starch, in presence of oxygen and in the pres presence of that you have something hot inside of your cell and you need to cool it and the cooling is the antioxidant and so you do have a need for antioxidant. This does not provide them. You need to ingest that elsewhere. Vegetables, fruits, vitamin C, vitamin A, vitamin D, all of those things. Those are the antioxidants. You need to have those on board. Okay, so will it then burn the toxins or will it help the toxins in the body uh, leave? Right, and that's the important part because it helps with the transport of things across the cell membrane. It's as if you had a more efficient crew that delivers the oxygen in and the metabolites or the toxins out. So, so going back to your barbecue uh, uh, metaphor, which I love, by the way, because you just transported me, me right back to when I was like 12 and beside my dad, we had this barbecue and we were barbecuing hamburgers and hot dogs and stuff like that in the backyard on a beautiful sunny day, right? And of course, I'm looking at those coals thinking, you know, you can't touch them. So what I'm, th what I'm seeing in my mind is this like glob or blob or globe. Object. And that is the cell. And in the cell, we have the barbecue. So we've got these coals and they're burning. And that, of course, is giving us energy. And what happens with a, with a lot of people is that it's a, the byproduct of this burning is, of course, the coal ash in the barbecue, right, an allergy, and it's stuck in the cell. So normally after a barbecue, we would take all the ash out, put it into a bag, maybe sprinkle it on the garden, or we would get rid of it, and then we would have this not necessarily clean, but we would have more room to put more uh, coals in the next time we wanted to do it. And our cells, if we can't get that, let's, let's just call it ash in terms of the barbecue metaphor, out, then pretty soon we're not going to be able to use the cell. Yeah, that's, that's the correct logic. And so because of this increased ability of transporting these metabolites out of the cell, that's the cleaning of it continuously. So we continuously supply oxygen, we continuously uh, remove the metabolites, so we perform a more efficient metabolic function. More it's energy. Like you're taking the garbage out. If you don't, in a couple months, you've got a room full of stinky bags of stuff that you don't want to even touch. That's right. Cool. So how does it work? Like, uh, do we, uh, you know, drink a bottle of it or do we eat it? Do we chew on it? Do we, how, how, does, how do we get it into our body? It comes in the form of a concentrate. We sell it in a one ounce bottle. You add at first one drop to a glass of water, every glass of water you drink. So you may have six drops a day and then you see what your tolerance is and you can increase it to two, three, four, all the way to maybe eight. So eight times six would be about 48 drops a day. That would be a reasonable maximum for people who have high metabolic needs. A typical person probably halfway to that. Okay. So the idea is have, we should be having six to eight glasses of water, eight ounce glasses of water a day, and one drop in, and the next day, are you, you know, review, were, are, were you more energetic? Did you feel better? Is your digestion working uh, well? Would you say this is something that you would notice a difference in uh, a day, a week, a month? I would say in a few days. A few you days. May want to, you may want to sleep better the first night. You may want to notice that you're, you can walk up the stairs without heart rate going up or without needing to stop after three flights of stairs. One of the things that I love about the Life Enthusiast products and uh, behind me on my table here, I have a whole pile of them and I would have no problem saying that I am a product of the product because Martin will tell you that I'm constantly placing orders for different things, particularly things that we talk about. <laughs> He'll say, well, Scott just ordered this. Gee, we just did a talk on this. I wonder why you ordered it. Well, you know, I, and I have to say that because of that, I feel like, well, everyone thinks I'm 10 years younger than I actually am, for one thing. And I feel pretty energetic and I feel 
when I look at people that are my age, all I can think is, thank God I'm not like them because they're hunched over and they're, they're plodding along and they're, I don't think my brain is as fast as I want it to be. However, it's way faster than a lot of the people that I talk to who are around my age. And uh, so being a product of the product is uh, these sort of things really, really excite me. Now, I forgot the whole point of why I brought that up, but uh, I think you're going to tell me that I need to send you a bottle or two. Uh, yeah, you need to send me a bottle or two for sure. Uh, but I'm really excited about this because it's an area that, oh, I know what it was, is one of the problems that uh, most people have is they don't, they are not aware of where they are today and then they're not aware of where they are tomorrow. And what I mean by that is, if today you're achy and tomorrow you're not, most of the time people don't realize, oh, I did something and I'm not achy. What is that? Did I walk more? Did I eat fruit? Did I have uh, iridesa? Did I, did I have a, you know, a couple drops of, of this product? And as a result, people don't understand what it is that is making them healthy and what it is that's making them unhealthy. And I really strongly recommend that when you get this bottle, take a couple days, or before you get the bottle, take a couple days and do a journal and just say, you know, how easy was it to you to get up? Were, did, were you, did you have insomnia? Well, did you have heartburn? Did you, you know, did, were, did you find that you were forgetting things? Uh, you would go up a slight flight of stairs. It's like, <gasps> you know, or like just really see where you are. And then after a couple days, Write down the same thing. You know, I went up a flight of stairs. I walked around the block. I, I did I sleep well? Did you know? Did, did was my heartburn gone? Those sort of things. And compare the two. A lot of times, people that uh, do therapy tell me, you know, they have a real problem with their clients because their clients say, "Well, I don't need you anymore. I'm happy and fine," and they don't realize. And and you didn't make any difference. And they don't remember what they were crying about you know, two sessions earlier or at the beginning of the session, you know, it's just part of how our brain works. So it's really important if you want to have long-term vitality and health in your life that you take an inventory. Every business does it. Like, what have we got in the back room? They take an inventory. What have we got for staff? They take an inventory. Who's good? Who's not? And you need to do the same thing in your life and say, you know what? These are the areas where I notice that I'm fading. These are the areas that I notice that I'm still good. Wow, you know, I've had this sore shoulder for a year now, or as long as I can remember. And you make a note of those things. And then when you take a product like this, wait a couple of days and get out your notes and say, wow, like, you know what? My shoulder is really feeling good now. I don't know why. Maybe it's the drops. Maybe it's I'm eating more apples, you know. But you need to do this journaling because we don't remember. And I'm traveling the world right now, and I've been in like, 30 countries in the last year and I'm realizing like wow like I'm in Greece and I put on 10 pounds what was I eating oh you know Greek pastas and really oily foods that I shouldn't have been eating or I'm in uh, you know I'm in Kenya and I'm eating a lot of the local foods and I'm my weight is back to where I want it to be. You know, it's like one country is a fat country. One, and I don't mean to pick on Greece or Kenya. One country is a fat country. One is a thin country. Like my tummy goes in and out all the time. And I'm like, and I'm starting to pay attention. Like, wow, like what am I actually eating when I'm in some of these places? Because it's having a, a huge impact on my health. And we don't do that, particularly when we're living in one place all the time. We have all our patterns, and this is our diet and everything else. We don't think about, well, like, you know, I'm in Las Vegas right now, which I am, and I've noticed that I'm cheating a lot. Like, I usually drink water, and here it's lemonade, which probably has a ton of sugar in it. And, you know, I'm really tempted to have fizzy drinks. <laughs> and I think it's part of the environment. You know, you're in a certain place, and there are just – these are the things that get pushed at you. So we don't pay attention and we really need to pay attention. And this product is really exciting to me, uh, but for you to get the biggest impact out of it, you need to take that inventory so you know before and you know after. And this is one of the reasons why I've been doing this for, I don't know if it's 12 years or 15 years, Martin, but uh, for 
30 years, I took tons of vitamin C's and this thing and that thing and you name it and because you know you're supposed to and never felt any difference. And then I took the iridesa and then I, you know, I went through the bottle and then I didn't have a bottle and I was like, oh my goodness, this is terrible. <laughs> like, I, have, I have three points I would like to make. Yes. One is we do not notice the absence of negative stuff. We do not notice the absence of rain. It's a sunny day. We do not notice the absence of pain. It's just okay. That's, that's the journaling, which makes a point. I'm going to do this. I don't know if it's going to take me a little while or not, but I'm going to put up an application on the website where a person's going to be able to take a self-assessment questionnaire, keep it private just between you and I, and be able to go back a week or month or a year later and see. And we'll just do the whole, whole That's a great idea. 200 questions. It's probably a five minute thing, but right. just answer, answer, answer. Tell me where you're at. We evaluated, we show you this sort of a, some kind of a graphic representation of, of how you feel and where your areas of concerns are. We're going to have it green and red, and we're going to show you the red stuff is pay attention here, maybe. And um, anyway, that's, that's a wonderful idea for an application that I, I think we need to develop. I think that's great. And uh, the third thing is um, the journaling works. Absolutely. It makes a huge difference. And uh, so, the, 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 and I guess the fourth thing is this. As you're explaining your geographic experiences, I will say that metabolic typing, which I'm one of metabolic typing coaches, or I am CMTA certified metabolic typing advisor. What we do with metabolic typing is we're able to tell people what foods and what combinations will work for them and why. And we will do that based on the fact that there are localized adaptations. Your ancestors were adapted to the food resource that was available to them wherever they were. So if your grandfathers and grandmothers are all from the British Isles, then they were eating British Isles food, which would have been cold Atlantic fish, like cod, herring, haddock, pollock, that sort of thing. And maybe the occasional sheep something and a lot of cabbage and some oats. Yeah. So if that's your ancestry, that's what you eat. Now, if your ancestry is Greek, then you eat Greek food. If your ancestry is uh, sub-Saharan African coastal, like Sierra Leone or Senegal, which a lot of Africans in America have inherited, then you eat tropical coastal food, coconuts and tropical fish and stuff like that, right? Yeah. So your experience in Kenya, you were eating fisherman stuff. Yeah. And in Greece, you were eating a farmer stuff. Yeah, I was on a farm, so absolutely. And your ancestry is fishermen. That's right. That's right. And there's your answer. Yeah, I need to have a few more oats and a little less of the other stuff. Although I have to admit, I love coconuts, so I don't know. Well, who knows? Maybe an African slave is in your uh, um, ancestry for all I know. Yeah, it's possible. So, Martin, getting back to uh, this wonderful product, how can someone get it if they they've listened to us and they think you know what i, I want to know more okay so we call this product do toxic cell you find it in trace minerals category on life enthusiast and that's life-enthusiast.com and if you have a question call us 866-543-3388 you need a drop of this in every glass of water you drink great thanks for joining us everybody we hope that you enjoyed uh, watching and participating and listening with us as much as we enjoyed bringing it to you. This has been the Life Enthusiast online radio and TV network, restoring vitality to you and the planet. See you next time. Bye-bye.